iconic aeroplane that dates back to the Cold War. The Vulcan, also known as the Avro 698, is almost as manoeuvrable as a fighter. After victory in the Second World War, there was great confidence in our armed forces. We had the men and the machines to take on all comers. For a boy growing up in the 1950s, one plane in particular summed up our power and our glory. The Vulcan is just one of the aircraft that are keeping supremacy in the air for Britain. This is going to be a special day for me. I'm going to fulfill a childhood ambition. When I was a kid, lots of us were keen on spaceships and rockets and flying saucers, but I was crazy about aircraft. And one plane in particular caught the imagination of almost every schoolboy in the country. And that plane was the Avro Vulcan bomber. With the Cold War escalating, a nuclear strike against Britain had become a very real threat. To defend herself, Britain needed a long-range aerial bomber capable of reaching targets across the Soviet Union. This Vulcan, the XH558, is the only one in the world that's still capable of flying. I'm going to be allowed to take to the skies to fly with the Vulcan. I want to relive the excitement and passion I felt about this plane when I was growing up. I'll be helped by a brilliant volunteer team who formed a charitable trust to save the plane and get it back into the air. It's been a labor of love against extraordinary odds. And it's that passion for the plane which has made it possible to have this version, the only one of its kind in the world, still flying. It's an amazing story. So when you first came across this plane, what condition was it in? It was nowhere airworthy. There was a lot wrong with it that we needed to work on to get it to the stage where it would receive the approvals to fly. It took Robert and his team of over 20 skilled engineers more than two years to strip this enormous bomber back to its airframe. It had to be rebuilt from the ground up. Around 800 separate components were overhauled. Thousands of individual tasks turn it back from a museum piece to a flying a flying aircraft. So what was the secret of the success? How did you Sheer manage Sheer determination, it? perseverance, never say die. Finally, 14 years and seven million pounds later, Vulcan XH558 once again took to the skies. But there's one part of this plane that hasn't been restored to full working order. This is the bomb bay. Uh, this was designed to carry the British nuclear weapon. That's where the bomb, the great big nuclear weapon, sits here. Yes, that, yes, that's right. Yeah, that's incredible, isn't it? And there it is, the dark side of the Vulcan. The dream plane built to unleash a nightmare. The government has decided that in the present state of international tension, you should be told how best to protect yourselves from the dangerous effects of nuclear attack. From the 50s onwards, Britain feared a nuclear war with the Soviet bloc and was quick to develop a nuclear arsenal. You can greatly improve your protection for the first few hours when radiation is at its greatest intensity. It was the Vulcan that was designed to deliver this nuclear assault. But what was it like to be the pilot and have that responsibility? I'm meeting John Tai, who was ready to get airborne at a moment's notice and prepare for an attack. We would get the Tannoy message, and the Tannoy message would say, attention, attention, this is the bomber controller for one group only, ready in the state 1-5. That meant we had 15 minutes to get airborne. And did you know at that point, once the Tannoy went, did you know uh, that it was a real alert or we, did you think it was an exercise? We had no idea. So every time that the Tannoy went, it could have been for real. 
you were in a position not to order an attack, but to take part in an attack which could kill tens of thousands of people. Yes, it was horrifying, but I used to think that only we would have to do it if we were attacked. Between 1957 and 1969, the Vulcan bomber and crewmen like John were primed to do their duty and retaliate. Thankfully, the attack never came, and John never dropped the bomb. But he did come face to face with the reality of this terrible responsibility some years later. My wife and myself were on holiday, and a young girl came to talk to me. And she said, I noticed you were talking English, and uh, I wanted to practice my English. So I said, where are you from? And she said, the name of this town in Russia. It was my primary target, and it rocked me back on my heels. I could not believe that here was a person from my primary target, which I thought was barracks, airfields, I never thought of it as people. And here you've got a beautiful young woman talking to you, and you suddenly realize, all these years later, you've got this lovely person you might have obliterated. And that really shook me to the core. In 1969, the RAF handed over responsibility for the nuclear deterrent to the Navy's Polaris submarines. But this wasn't the end for the Vulcan. Instead, it was converted for use as a conventional bomber and played a pivotal role in 1982 during the Falklands War. Last night, two Vulcan bombers took off from a century. Their target, three and a half thousand miles away. On May the 1st, the British liberation of the islands began with Operation Black Buck, a high-altitude bombing assault on the airfield at Stanley by Vulcan bombers. I'm meeting Martin Withers, who flew on this mission. You were on that famous bombing mission in the Falklands War, weren't you? Yes, I was the captain of the first one that uh, went in in uh, 1st of May 1982. I flew one of these for 15 and three quarter hours. So you were cramped in these conditions That's all right. that time. And we had to refuel. We re refueled a total of seven times from airborne Victor tankers. And what was your task? What were you meant to be doing? Well, the task there was to uh, to put a bomb or two bombs onto the runway at Stanley. And how much of a success was this attack? We're very pleased to, you know, be able to say that it it made a major contribution. I mean, it was successful. We hit the runway and. Thereafter, the Argentinians never launched any strikes from that airfield. Despite this high-profile success, the Vulcan's service life was coming to an end, and in 1993, the last one was sold off. But now the Vulcan's back. I'm keen to get flying, but I can't resist the chance to look inside to see the heart of the beast. This would not have been allowed in the 1950s. When I was a kid dreaming about Vulcans and being a Vulcan pilot, and here we are in this cramped space. It's just, yes, it's what it should be. It's difficult, it's complicated, it is. It's just, it's a childhood dream <laughs> come true. Finally, the moment has come. I never thought this would happen. Parachute on. I'm going to fly wing to wing with the plane of my dreams. It's going to be a tremendous trip. And that noise you hear, that's the noise of the Vulcan. It is the Vulcan roar. In a small plane, up close and personal, I'm going to see aviation history played out in the skies. We're right over the Vulcan now, and we can see it on the runway. Blade 5, happy for you to slam as required. It is about to take off. The Vulcan is starting to move along the runway, picking up speed, and it's taking off. It's going up. What a sight. What a wonderful sight it is. already, already starting to pull away. 
Falcon, you are one noisy bird, but it's very beautiful. Contact Doncaster Radar 126. Oh, that is amazing, and we're right ahead of the Vulcan, and we're seeing it. Oh, that is a, a wonderful sight. I know it's a cliche, but it is like a great big bird. And the camouflage works perfectly against the crisscross of the field. We're seeing the, the Vulcan in its natural habitat. We're now just below it, and we're looking up. We can read what it says on the front. And it's called the Spirit of Great Britain. This is one of the most amazing and most extraordinary aircraft in the world. It's an emotional moment in ordinary life. How would you ever see a plane like this? What a sight. Oh, dear, look at that. Oh, that looks terrific. Fabulous patchwork of Britain. One of the greatest planes in the world, which does happen to be, okay, let's be proud of it, happens to be written. And off she goes. Off she goes. Wow, look at that. Now she's showing her real speed. And we can see the Vulcan just roaring away from us right up into the sky. What an amazing experience that was. You I don't expect to be in a small plane like this, flying alongside what was one of the most powerful machines ever built. And it, it, looked, it looked so beautiful. 